Let us continue our discussion of deformation and mountain building. In the last video, we discussed how rocks layers bend. However, if they don't bend, they'll break. Joints are simply cracks in the rock, but there's no movement. Faults, on the other hand, the rock layers break in response to stress and the parts move in relation to each other. It does not matter which one moved or if both moved. Faults are named according to their relative movement and each are in response to a different kind of stress. Normal faults, as we see here, with a foot wall and a hanging wall, occur when rock strata is placed under tension. It stretch elongated until it breaks. Observing the blocks, if we pull on them, they'll break thin and are elongated. This is a normal fault. The hanging wall is hanging from the football. In a reverse fault, The rock strata are put under compression. Remember, compression also causes folds. But if the layers don't bend, they will break. The rock layers are shortened, thickened, and there are repeated layers. Now, looking at our block example, if I push on it, notice it's shortened and thickened. And notice we could drill into this yellow layer, then drill out of it, then drill back into it again repeated layers of strata. Now there's a special kind of reverse fault known as a thrust fault. And this is what we see here at the bottom. It's also a reverse fault, but it's a very low angle reverse fault. I want you to look up Keystone Thrust Fault uh, online or in your textbook. You'll see that the older lock rocks are thrust up over the younger rock. There is a sharp color trans, trans, transition between the two of them. The last type of fault we will discuss is something different in that the movement is parallel to the plane of the fault. Here's the plane of the fault. Here's the plane of the fault, and the movement is parallel to the plane of the fault. Movement is categorized as right lateral or left lateral. Lateral means to the side. Absolute movement does not matter. They both could have moved in opposite directions or the same direction, just not the same amount. Or one could have moved, but not the other. Students often seem bent on making this one hard when it's painfully simple. Imagine you are standing on one side of a strike-slip fault. Which direction does it appear that the other side moved from your perspective? In a left lateral strike-slip fault, it will appear to have moved to the left. Now, anyone standing on the other side, it looks as if your side moved to his left. Absolute me movement is meaningless. In a right lateral strike-slip fault, the other side will appear to have moved to the right. It will appear the same to someone standing on the other side of the fault. You will have appeared to have moved to his right. In the U.S., the San Andreas Fault is a transform plate boundary. It is also a right lateral strike-slip fault. In about 12,500 years, LA will be a suburb of San Francisco. Make sure to study the pictures in your textbook or check online for examples of what we've covered. If you have any questions, make sure you go talk to your professor about it because you guys have paid for this. In closing, it is the principle of uniformitarianism 
that allows us to relate events in the natural world today, such as earthquakes, mud flows, or glaciers, to the evidence we see in the rocks from the Earth's distant past. Geologists love our big words. I've kind of broken it up a little here. This ends our discussion of deformation mount building. Next time, we will get into mass wasting. See you there.